do two things with you today. First, I want to talk about Catholic Ministries Appeal, and then I want to talk to you about the gospel of today and why we call today Divine Mercy. Divine Mercy Sunday. Okay? But first, a little on the Catholic Ministries Appeal. Remember, everyone, the Catholic Ministries Appeal used to be known as the Annual Diocesan Appeal. Okay, and every year to kick off now, the name has changed. Now it's the Catholic Ministries Appeal. I like to do a review of the previous year's appeal, so here are the statistics for last year's Catholic Ministries Appeal. Holy Family, your goal was $4,830. The total given was $4,610. So the percent of goal was 95%, and the percent of parishioners who participated was 32%. St. John Vianney, your goal was $46,750. The total given was $36,236. So percent of goal was 77%, and percent of parishioners who participated was 21%. Okay, so some of you may be giving pledges yet to the capital campaign entitled Rooted in Faith, Rejoice in Hope. Those pledges will be taken this year and next year, and then those pledges will cease. Okay, it was a five-year pledge window. Next year is the last year. And just remember, the Catholic Ministries Appeal is not the Rooted in Faith, Rejoice, and Hope capital campaign. Catholic Ministries Appeal is the yearly appeal we take up to help fund ministries for the diocese. As done last year, a direct mailing has been sent to every household in the diocese. The mailing contains a letter from Bishop Quinn, a ministries brochure detailing the ministries assisted through the appeal, and a return envelope for any household wishing to pledge. Because of the importance of the appeal, I make this promise I will give to the appeal. And as I give, I would encourage you to give as well. Okay, please remember, no gift is too small. And secondly, you don't have to make your payment all at once. You can make payments throughout the year. Common question asked is this. Are Catholic Ministries appeal funds used to pay legal fees or settlements for clergy sex abuse cases? No appeal money has ever been used for victim settlements or legal costs related to clergy sex abuse cases. Gifts to the appeal are only used for the, de for the purpose of the benefit of designated ministries and programs identified and for no other purposes. The past year, everyone, I was named the assistant vicar for clergy, and I've come to a greater appreciation of the Catholic Church. The beauty of the church, everyone, is we are family. We aren't just our parish. Catholic Church, everyone, when you think about it, is local, it is diocesan, and it is universal. Okay, and think about the work that we've done. Think about all the Catholic schools, Catholic hospitals. We have the Peter Spence collection. If there's a disaster, the Holy Father can send funds for it. We have people that go to disaster areas. We've done a great deal worldwide for 2,000 years. And I think one of the things we have to be careful of is we can get lawfully local and think this is it right here. But remember, we're diocesan as well, and we are universal too. And if we don't give to something like Catholic Ministries Appeal, it shrinks the mission of the church. People, we've been in business, you know that. You don't get the funds, what do you have to do? You have to cut. It's the way it works. And ministries are cut, and because of that, we as parishes don't have people to whom we can turn. Thus, the appeal benefits parishes and schools by assessing schools, like St. John Vianney School, to help them achieve academic achievement and accreditation. It also helps screening and supervising all members of the clergy, employees, and volunteers to ensure a safe environment in our parish and schools. That's why we have our safe and sacred programs. It also trains parish and school staff to be competent and faithful in their work. These are pieces that many parishes, schools, we just can't afford to have all these people in hand. So who do we turn to? We turn to the diocese. And such helps everyone are provided at no charge. So just to give you an idea of the goals this year, St. John Vianney is $47,110. Holy Family, and I agree with this, with the proposal to move to oratory status, no goal will be asked of Holy Family. I think that's wise. Yet parishioners can still participate 
if they choose. Remember, parishes will be returned 100% of the funds exceeding their goal if they have a designated project. We do, St. John Vianney, with any funds exceeding goal, we would like to repaint the gathering space of the church. It also means parishes ending short of goal will be invoiced for the shortfall. So that was the case for our parishes last year. Holy Family was invoiced for $210 in St. John Vianney for $10,513. That's a tough check to sign, everyone, as you can imagine. So for your information, I guess it proves helpful at the current rate of 21% participation of 800 families for St. John Vianney, if each family of that 21% gave $280, that means that we would reach our goal, okay? So I just want to present to you some information today on the Catholic Ministries Appeal. So let's pray for its success today. Divine Mercy. People, Divine Mercy Sunday is always celebrated eight days after Easter. It makes sense. You heard the gospel of today. First of all, we heard about Jesus appears to the ten on Easter Sunday. Eight days later, we hear about Thomas. We're in that octave, we come to eight days afterwards. And remember this, Thomas is the one that said during Jesus' walk to Jerusalem, let us go to Jerusalem to die with him. Well, here's my question. How did that do? How did it go? Okay, like the rest, he simply abandoned ship. Okay, the going got tough, things got tough. And he said, that's enough. Okay, so last year we hear in the gospel story, the ten are locked together and remember why they're scared. And you can imagine the guilt they feel, the shame. And Jesus comes in their midst and he says, peace be with you. Peace. Peace. Okay, they tell Thomas, Thomas, we've seen the Lord. What would you have done if you were Thomas? Would you have said, I believe, or would you have said, I won't believe until I see it? I fall in the ladder. I think I would have had our time believing. No one had ever talked about resurrection. No one had ever seen resurrection. Thomas says, I won't believe until I can touch him. Give him credit. He stayed. He could have said, This is all nonsense. I'm leaving. But he stays. A week later, today, eight days after Easter, Jesus comes and what does he say? Peace be with you. Thomas, touch and believe. And he takes Thomas's hand, puts it in his side, and says, Thomas, don't persist in your unbelief. Believe. Jesus had his chance. He could have said, Thomas, you said, and yet you didn't do. Peter, you said too, you could die with me, you didn't do it. But you know something? He doesn't do that. Peace is what he says. That, everyone, is why we call this Sunday divine mercy. Jesus had his chance to shame, to ridicule, to point fingers, and yet he doesn't. He says peace. And that's what he says to us today, too. Peace. As I have done, you too must do. And that's what I want all of us to do today, everyone, as we gather in this divine mercy Sunday. Think in your hearts about people that you still need to forgive. Forgive. Okay, let's not hold grudges because that's what Jesus is saying today. Let it go. Pray for peace. Pray for forgiveness. That's the mercy God gives. That's the mercy that we too are to give. And we call that divine mercy because it's only possible through the hand of God. Okay, mercy. What we give is what we receive. Give forgiveness. So let's pray for that, everyone. As we gather today, let's pray for our Catholic Ministries appeal, for our work as a diocesan church. Let us take a moment today and let us pray.